podcast is brought to you by Head Start Basketball. The Hoop Heads podcast is brought to you by Head Start Basketball. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Heads podcast. It's Mike Cleansing here with my co-host Jason Sunkel. Hi. And joining us tonight on the podcast, all the way from Chicago, Illinois, Trevor Huffman. Welcome back to the NBA pod, Trevor. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey, yeah. You're the first, officially the first three-time person on the podcast, right? I believe that's true. So you should feel honored, Trevor. <laughs> I do. We, we, waited, we prolonged us getting picked on for the Cavs uh, as long as we humanly possible, but yeah. uh, I think like like Mike and I said, we're kind of happy they're losing now. The debt's gonna be paid at some point. So. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I'm thinking when Mike comes, when Mike, when Mike comes to you in Chicago in May, you might have a, a special present with with Mike for you. So I'm just I'm co- I'm coming to Kent next Kent State next uh, month. So if you want to just oh, oh that'll be yeah. Let's, we can I'll, we can do that. We could do that. We'll sure, make we it, we'll, make it, we'll, we'll make it. Work. We'll make it work. All right. So we're gonna talk some NBA tonight and um. We're going to talk the trades, but before we do that, tonight was the NBA lottery pick where the uh, the the uh, LeBron and Giannis made their picks for the NBA All-Star game. So we'll start with LeBron went with the obvious choice, Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant for the first pick. Um, and it was funny because Ernie Johnson said to him, well, that's who you picked for first last year. And he's like, yeah, but Kevin didn't believe me, so I wanted to make sure I did it first again this year or something along those lines. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I mean, he would have been—he probably would have been my. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think he was. I think he was. I think I think he's got to be the consensus number one pick. No matter, I don't think anybody would have quibbled with picking Durant number one. Um, and then Giannis took Steph Curry second. What do yeah. you think about that? What do you think about that, Trevor? Uh, I mean. You know, Steph Curry, Joel Embiid, Paul George, they they got some they got some shooters. Yep, definitely. I mean, you can't really go wrong with Steph Curry, I don't think. No, I don't no. think so. I think I think the only pick you could have gone wrong with was Kevin Walker. Yeah, whoever when Jason and I when Jason and I did this and then we threw the Twitter poll up there. Jason's team won, but I think it wouldn't have mattered who the other four guys were. Whichever team ended up with Kemba Walker was probably not going to be picked. Yeah. That's a weird pick. Uh, well, is, I think I mean, Kemba's is, in because it's in Charlotte. It's in Charlotte, so that's oh, my okay. assumption. Is Anthony Davis even playing? Like, why would he go 10th? I'm trying to figure that out. Because he's a reserve, so he has to be – they had to pick the 10 star, They had to pick the ten starters. So okay. the starters, they still do on East and West. So that's why Kemba Walker is the fifth starter for the pick from the East, even though it. the East and Western Conference teams are – are, are, are no, no are longer are no longer to kind of I guess I mean I kind of like that they did that but I kind of also think that if they're going to get rid of the East and the West rosters they should just do the top 24 players in the yeah, NBA and kind of scrap the East and West rosters if they're not going to play East and West. I think they should go off the ESPN yeah, fantasy player raider because <laughs> my, my team once again is in the hunt for first place. This is, this is the I don't know third or fourth year in a row. I'm, I who's your write, starting five? Who's your starting five? My starting five, Paul George. I got him in like the third round this year. That was a good top. pick. Carl Anthony Towns, because I knew, I knew, uh, you know, I knew that I, what's his name, the guy that went to uh, Minnesota, uh, Jimmy Butler. I knew, he, I knew he was oh, just going to have a, a. He was in Venice partying all summer. I knew he was going to have a breakdown, mental breakdown. <laughs> so he's out. Um, I get you know that's two top five players right there. You don't really have to do much, guys, when you when you have the foresight to predict hey. Cleveland being in the bottom. And <laughs> hey, I want you to know, uh, my fantasy basketball team, Trevor, I have the Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid stack. Ooh. That's that's good. Yeah, it's uh, solid. It's solid. Now you got to pick up what Tobias rounds Harris. Did you get him? Yeah, Tobias Harris is. A... I I took I I took Embiid in the first round and I got Simmons in the second. Oh wow, that was that was. That was a gutsy move. I, 
Simmons is just one of those guys. I don't know. Are you rotisserie? So we do rotisserie, not head to head. head. We do head to head, and and so one of the categories is triple double. So yeah, when I huge. like, I needed to I needed to pick someone. I mean, Westbrook's obviously with Westbrook's winning. Westbrook and Harden are kind of winning that category for the league. But Simmons yeah. and Embiid, and I have Luca too. So he's gotten one and a few other people. But you know, triple doubles are not really hot commodities a lot of people are yeah. not getting them so it's it's really hard to get mike guys averaged that. a triple double at kent state oh yeah absolutely <laughs> if you count like if, if you had to get three if three counts as a triple double <laughs> then i think i got there on rebounds and play and assists <laughs> if you had to get to three to count that as a triple double I what think about I was steals right didn't you have a good steals remember i had eight in one game eight in one game that's still, still, still the record eight eight steals how is eight a, a record eight steals in a game that's a lot of steals man did you really get eight steals in one game? Yes. So okay. So you don't know the story. So the story is, is that in I college. have eleven. I have eleven steals in my career. And eight uh-huh. came in one game. Eight came in one game. And my quote in the paper, I still remember it verbatim. After the game, Elton Alexander asked me, "How did you get that many steals tonight?" And I looked at him and I said, "I don't know. They just kept passing me the ball." <laughs> <laughs> So, so that's a single. I still have two single game records there. Can you believe that? Who was it against? Uh, it was against Central Michigan. Central oh, Michigan. Wow, that's yeah, wow. it's crazy. It's it's totally ridiculous. Honestly, I I seriously might have, and I'm not exaggerating. I might have 30 steals for my career. Well, like including high school? <laughs> I mean, well, I don't know about high school, but you know, I mean, college. Yeah, I you know, what? that's I mean, a lot of steals. It is a lot of steals in one and game. And what was your other record? And my other record is three. Threes in a game. Nine threes in a game. So I still hold both of those. Trevor, you didn't break that. I'm kind of I'm shocked. I'm, just, I'm, I'm so proud shocked that I, I still have something over top of you. I'm I still have something out I'm in the basketball court. I'm disappointed in myself now. <laughs> yeah, I see How many, what's the most threes you had in a game, Trevor? Man, I, that's a good question. I, I wasn't – I mean, I wasn't like a pure shooter. I, I, was, I was just kind of an all-around mediocre player. <laughs> mediocre all-time leading scorer at Kent State and hit the mediocre. I just I wonder. Like, my thing is, I wonder how you know the way the game has shifted. Just I think about how many more threes yeah. I would have shot if if I played in the era of the game today. I mean, it just you know who knows, but one hundred percent. Yeah, but anyway. All right, so I, let's go back to the, the NBA let's start, to the draft. Let's so stop. let's let's just let's just fast forward to the big funny part of this whole thing so, is that LeBron picked. Four of his, like, what, three of his first four guys are all free agents that he wants to come play with them in Los Angeles. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so we he picks Kevin Durant, free agent, Kyrie Irving, free agent, Kawhi Leonard, free agent. The only guy on the starting crew that he picked that wasn't a free agent is James Harden, and he probably doesn't want to play with James Harden. Okay, and then, and then the next guy he picks was tenth, was Anthony Davis, and. Giannis said, isn't that tampering? And LeBron said, tampering rules do not apply on All-Star Weekend. <laughs> That's great. I'd be tampering all the time if I was LeBron. And then, yeah, I think they I think they are. I think they all are. I don't I don't even know how you police player tampering. And, I don't think and, that's even yeah, possible. And then and then by the way, LeBron's next pick, Clay Thompson, also a free agent mm. after the season. So I just think it's uh Interesting. Is is Magic and Rob Polinka are they coaching the team? I don't know, but oh, listen. Oh, I didn't know this. This is a new. This is a new thing. LeBron took Westbrook at sixteen, okay, but then traded uh, Russell Westbrook for Ben Simmons. So apparently, Ben Simmons is also now on Team LeBron. I didn't know that. I saw something. They said they said it was an exciting trade during the during the draft. Giannis accepted his trade offer. They, I don't know what else he got, but. In the trade, but all right, there you go. And then obviously the other, the only other really kind of uh, interesting thing was they did this special roster. <laughs> Say that again. Sorry. They added they added Dwayne Wade and Dirk Nowitzki as special roster additions. Uh huh. That's cool. Because so and LeBron obviously picked Wade and Dirk went to Giannis. So and that's the other funny thing is if you look at Giannis's team. He's got lots of Europeans and uh, foreigners on his team because he ended up with uh, he ended up with uh, Joel he, has, and, he has Jokic. Jokic. He has Jokic. He has Jokic, Vucevic, Joel Embiid, Davitsky. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. And then obviously himself, but it's pretty 
It's like they're almost gonna, it's almost Team Europe versus. It's, it's, it's close. Gonna be, they're going to be passing the ball around. That's all they're going to do. And then <laughs> he's passing it around. Look at those amazing passes. Hopefully it'll goaltend because they think they can dunk. They can oh. do that in the. Um, uh, all right, call your winner. Call your winner. Call your winner, fellas. Which team wins? Look at those. Look at study the rosters carefully. With, Make your prediction now. Do they actually play hard? Is this like? The last, the last three minutes, the, the last, last three minutes, all, the last All Star game was actually good. Was the most competitive All Star game probably in the last since Shaq five, dribbled it between five, his legs. Six, seven years. They, they actually, <laughs> there actually was a little bit of playing because I think, again, when the guys got picked, that added a little incentive. Well, so I hopefully that'll be the case they, again. This they're year. doing it. They're also raising, they're also raising money for charities. So like the captains get to pick a charity, and the uh-huh. winning team gets more money for charity. So I think. Like LeBron and Giannis obviously have a little more skin in the game, but at the same time, I think they also get a bigger paycheck for participation if they win, and as opposed to lose, they were trying to incentivize it for the players. So, huh? Do you think? Do you think that uh, Giannis? Do you think they like asked him if he wanted the Greek Freak that name, or do you think they just went with it? I think they just went with they it. They just went with it. Yeah, I think they just went with it. I don't, I don't, I don't know that anybody, I don't know that anybody got his approval for that one. Yeah, I don't know how I'd feel about that. Like the rest of your life, you got stamped as the. I mean, it's okay, you're getting hundreds of millions of dollars, but it's not the best. It's not the best, most flattering nickname that I. Oh. You could probably, you know, pin on yourself. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, right. since since nobody's stepping up to the plate, I, I pick Team LeBron. Uh, that's where I'm gonna head to. I'm All going right. LeBron. Screw you guys. I'm going Team Giannis then. All right, good work. Listen, right. if he, if he wins this one too, I'm not gonna be very happy. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out the the spacing here. You got you got Kyrie. He needs the ball. James Harden needs the ball. Anthony Davis needs the ball. Clay Thompson might be the reason they win. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think you got. I think you got a lot. But I think from that, I think you have more potential MVPs on LeBron's team. Yeah, you have more guys who could potentially get that 35, 40 point game because they're going to be the guy that handles the ball. You know, kind of, you go through the first half and you see, all right, who's got, who's got 20 at the half. And then, mm-hmm. then everybody just feeds that guy and lets him go and do his thing. Yeah. But it'll be interesting. Hopefully, hopefully they'll play hard in the last six minutes, kind of like they did last year, because in previous years, like the, the three, four, five years leading up to that, the game had become, I mean, it always was, you know, a playground game with not much defense, but the last couple of years, before last year, it was it was terrible. I mean, there was just uh-huh. no, they didn't even play at all. Hey, it's fun. It's funny though. We'll see. I want. I'm, I'm interested to see how many points they score this year because the league is scoring way more points on the offensive side of the ball, and like the All Star game typically has a lot more points. Well, is you someone going to get? It's all... someone getting to 200 this year? They could. It's all going to be dunks and it's dunks and threes. I mean, they're I don't you know how many mid range shots are. Even Carmelo's not in the game, so yeah, I think we're safe from that. <laughs> Did I see that he's getting traded to the Lakers? What is that about? No, 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 no. So, so we'll, we'll get into the discussion okay. with the Lakers, but but they've they've opened a roster spot with the, the few of their moves. So he's in consideration for one of the spots and. Woj purported that he seems to be a front runner, which oh, I can't see how putting him around the already tenuous locker room. Yeah, I don't know. It's I, not going to go over well. Well, but again, LeBron's always wanted to play with him, so it's probably going to happen. That's <laughs> if I if I had to predict, I know I predicted his next place that he would play would be China, so I might be wrong. But uh, if, he ends, <laughs> if, he, if he ends up in LA with the Lakers, uh, you know, justice is served. Yeah, it's fantastic. All right, so. Are we ready to talk the trades? Yeah, let's talk. Let's okay. talk trades. Okay, so start, we're going to start throwing them at us, Jim. We're going to go to February 3rd, which right. was five days ago. Okay. The trade that started the trade. No, well, not really. But the, the Cavs, I went to the Cavs game on Saturday night with my dad and watched the Cavs play the Mavericks purely because I wanted to see Luka Doncic play in person. And he scored 28 points in the first half. But I said to my dad, Rodney Hood and Alec Burks will not be Cavaliers by the trade deadline. And my dad goes, well, what are they going to get for him? And I said, probably not much. And Rodney Hood, we got we got Sas Castillo, aka Nick Stauskas, Wade Baldwin. We got a second round pick and another second round pick. So that's pretty good for Rodney Hood, to be yeah, honest well, with you. It's like I always say, Trevor, I, I like to call him I don't call him Rodney Hood. I like to call him theoretical Rodney Hood. Because <laughs> theoretical Rodney Hood is a player that you probably would want on your team because 
He's six foot eight. He's athletic. He can. He has beautiful shooting form. He can pass the ball. And then, unfortunately, you watch real Rodney Hood play, and <laughs> every beautiful shot that he takes bounces off the back of the rim, and he turns it over. So I, I was not sad to see the real Rodney Hood no. depart because nobody the was. radical Rodney Hood never showed up here. Nobody was. I mean, just all you had to do is watch watch him in the playoffs and. Yeah, you know he just listen. Didn't. He, you know what? He, the one thing he's really good at is knocking phones out of people's hands. He is. That was a that was maybe his career highlight. <laughs> I didn't ever. I never saw that. In, in Utah, that. in All Utah, right. in Utah, he got. I think he got ejected. Yes. Yeah, so and as he was get walking out, someone was taking a picture of him, so he smacked the phone away. Oh, that's classic. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. at it was at home, and it was a fan of the Utah Jazz that was doing mm. it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and we we weren't sad to see him go. So you got two second round picks that either you use. You know yourself, or you package or, them up yeah. for something else yeah, in the and, future. Yeah, and I should say that Nick Stauskas and Wade Baldwin only made it as the Cavaliers for a, approximately um, 48 hours because they were om- almost immediately traded. Uh, and we'll get there in a second. Then the next pay trade was the Lakers traded and acquired Reggie Bullock from your Detroit Pistons. I bet you were really sad about that. Ah, uh, he's okay. He's okay. I he's he's just like. All the Stanley Johnson, but I mean, they're all like to me, they're just unserviceable. Is that a word? Unserviceable. Unserviceable. I like it. <laughs> they're they're it's they can't they they can't do you know they can't create they they're not great scorers or shooters. Two way players sometimes like you look at their defensive stats like uh I don't know I play fantasy I think I could get one steal a game in the NBA right now just <laughs> be, you know just put me in the, put me out there I'll Joe get Pops one steal. Lanes. Yeah, there you go. I'll take a few risks. So wow. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about this guy you got, who's V. Mahaloy. I've never even heard of him. I don't even think he played any minutes for the Lakers, but maybe he did. Um, and a second round pick, but yeah, I mean Reggie Bullock again. The the theory is is that he's a good shooter, and I'm sure the Lakers were doing that at that point, still with the idea that somebody else was on their way here, yeah. uh, on their way to L. A. So. Yeah. That obviously All right. didn't happen. So then, so then the other pig, the big, big trade that kind of really got things going here and kind of opened my eyes big time, I sent a text to Mike right after it happened, was the 76ers getting Tobias Harris, Boban, I can't say his last name, Mira Jonovic, and Mike Scott for, I mean, Landry Shamet, Wilson Chandler, Mike Muscala, and one, two, three, four draft picks, basically saying the 76ers are all in. They're yeah, all I mean, in. Philly just, yeah, Philly basically just said that, hey, I, I mean, I think there's two ways to look at this. One is you put Tobias Harris in that lineup, and now you've got, you know, arguably you got four very, very good players. And, and you still have, and you're not including JJ Redick as right. A fifth, I mean, as you have player. you 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 now become, especially offensively, you become very versatile. Um, and it's also a hedge, I think, against the fact that if Jimmy Butler doesn't resign or things don't go well in the postseason you know both of the both Tobias Harris and Jimmy Butler are free agents coming up and obviously the Sixers gave up a lot so I'm sure the plan is to sign those guys long term but if one or both of them don't work out or the Sixers you know lose in round two of the playoffs you know who knows what ends up happening with those two guys but I think on paper it makes Philly better whether or not that translates to a product on the floor that's better you know, there's a lot of things that they got to work out in terms of, you know, how do you how do you share the ball between between those four guys? One of the things that makes Golden State unique is those guys have figured out how to play together, uh, and so Philly's got some work to do to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. I love I love that trade for Philly. I I think it's a good move. They got a chance to get to the Eastern Conference Finals and maybe win. You know, so I say, you know, I, I say, if you got the talent, you got a guy like Embiid who can just dominate a game. You got to put as many pieces. You know, Jim Lee's solid. I love Simmons' game. You know, they got they got enough pieces there to to definitely to make a run at it. So, all right. So then the other trade that your team made, the Thon Maker. Well, let's for, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Oh. What about the Clippers now? You got to talk about this from the Clippers. So the Clippers basically with that trade, the Clippers have done a reset where they've, you know, they've basically punted 
this season where for a while there, you know, for the first month, month and a half, they were at the top of the Western Conference. Hey, hey man, they, they turned they turned that into a, something else, though. They traded Moscala for Zubak and Michael Beasley. That screams playoffs to me. I'm just uh, telling. <laughs> I kind of think no. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I kind of think no on that. But they, again, like they've they've now said that we're going to clear some space to be able to sign Kawhi and possibly another free agent. Uh, there's there's talk that they're still possibly, you know, in the summertime now that Anthony Davis didn't get traded, that they can get back into that Anthony Davis sweepstakes. I'm not sure that yeah, the you know the picks and you know whatever that they have. Yeah. The question is how much does anybody value Shea Gilgis Alexander? Um, is he a piece that somebody would really want as the center of what would be an Anthony Davis trade? I don't know, but uh, it's interesting that as as much success as the Clippers had this year, that by trading Harris, they kind of reset their timetable, yeah. which, you know, you understand. Hmm. Good stuff. There's so many trades. I've never, have you ever seen this many trades? There's a lot. There's, there's not, and we're not, we're not even at, we're not even at what happened today. Um, yeah, it feels like, and, a, it feels like a lot. I don't know. I, I'm kind of skipping some of the other not really important pick trades. How about this one? You're Chicago. You live in Chicago. Yes. Right. So the Otto Porter for Bobby Porter is Jabari Parker in a 2023 second round pick. Huge. The bull. I think that's a great move. I love Otto. Otto Porter is also on my fantasy team and Zach Le- Levine. Levine or Levine. I call him Zach Levine. 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 No. The, yeah. I call him Maroon Five because he's soft like butter. <laughs> but he keeps his shirt on. He keeps his shirt on though, right? <laughs> oh my gosh! The highlight of every woman's NFL Super Bowl. That's right. And, and That's every right. man was just like, "What the hell is this?" Yeah, why is this guy doing? Why is this guy doing this? Yeah, come Save on, us. man. Yeah. Um, I love the I love Otto Porter Jr. I think he's been like, why do you have so many wings in Washington? You know, you got Bradley Beal, you got. You got the kid that went to Phoenix. You got, you know, he was basically just pushed under after having, you know, I always love efficiency. You know, you look at his stats, he gets steals, he gets blocks, he gets rebounds. He's a pretty good passer. He shoots great percentages. He plays within himself. He's a, you know, I think he's a winner more, more so than a guy like wall. You know, he can, he can fit into different, um, different positions. Well, so. I say, who, I, I, who knows if John Wall is ever going to play again? I don't think that's he crazy. is. By the way, that story is crazy. I mean, just the fact. How that, do you fall at? See, something has to shady had been going on. Well, like you fall at home and you rupture your Achilles and you're already injured. It's called like, just Hennessy. He was drinking something. <laughs> he was just like, screw it, man. I every every pro athlete I've ever been with is like, you know, you get hurt, you you know, you get home, you're just like, screw it, man. My season's right, what over. What do I do? I'm right. Hitting, what do I do? I'm hitting the bottle. And that's what I think <laughs> happened. I think he hit. I think he was drinking, and he just, he or some, who knows, man. I, yeah, I just it's, crazy. It's just. It? I mean, if you're the Wizards, that's just. A, I mean, that is a disaster, beyond description. The fact that his extension hasn't even kicked in yet, and he's still got four years, 165 million dollars. Now there has to on that. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. So, wow. I, I, I mean, talk about hamstringing that entire franchise. I mean, they can't. It can't do anything until that contract comes up. You're basically four years of like, hey, guys, you know, whatever. <laughs> hey, you know, there's nothing we can do. Let's just I, all I, start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I will say, I will say, I like this trade for Chicago, too, but it's primarily because I think Otto Porter might be good for the war and get them some extra wins to yeah, cast might, the yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So I'm, I'm all about that. I'm all I about gotta, that. I live in Chicago. I got I to gotta say, man, it's pretty depressing. I went to a Blackhawks game. And they sucked, but you know people love the Blackhawks in Chicago. It turns out I went in there it was from the ice to the ceiling, full of you know people. I was like, oh my god, this is crazy. I went to the Bulls game. There was like 17 people there, and they're both <laughs> losing. I mean, both franchises yeah, they're right, having right. great seasons. So I was like, yeah, it's really interesting. Like I would like the Bulls to get better selfishly because I would go to games. Yeah, it'd be. I mean, again, I'm sure that you know, obviously when the when the when the when the team is successful, that that crowd and that fan base, yeah. I'm sure, will be a, you know, would be a ton of fun to be there at games. It's kind of interesting that they punted on Jabari so fast. Um, you know, we talked yeah. about him a couple of times in our preseason. He just strikes me again as a guy that has a skill set, but that really doesn't have 
an idea of how to play basketball, at least not winning basketball. Yeah. All yeah. right. So then a trade that happened featuring the Cavaliers again. This was uh, Stauskas and Baldwin and Shumpert to the Rockets. Brandon Knight. He was a Detroit Piston at one point, right? Mm. Yeah. 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 Brandon, Brandon Knight, Marquise Chris, and a 2019 first-round pick via the Rockets to the Cavs, and the Kings get Alec Burks. Hmm. I think what from a Cavs standpoint, I think it's pretty interesting that they – so basically they shipped out three players over the course of this season. So they shipped out Corver earlier to Utah, and then they shipped out Hood, and you ship out Alec Burks. And from that, you came away with the two second-round picks – and two first round picks, correct? Yeah, and got, two players. Yeah, so I mean, to me, if you're the Cavs, like there's no downside because you're trying to lose, and now you've picked up some extra picks that, you know, you could possibly use in a trade. It, it, it still comes down to, for me, it, it comes down to Zion. I mean, you have to you have to get lucky and win the lottery again, and if you do that, now suddenly you have some things that you could package together to yeah. possibly bring in somebody else and find guys that fit. Wait, with are you, are you, go, are you saying you're picking Zion first? Is that who you're? Oh, taking? absolutely. 1 million percent. Oh, I've been, I've been, Zion, I've been on the, I've been on the Zion bandwagon Way. since, since I saw him play those exhibition games up in Canada. You're not a Zion guy. No. All right. I, so who's your guy then? I think he's going to be better than Julius Randall. He's going to, he's, he's going to be like a Julius Randall. He's not going to be able to charge into the lane and, overpower people in the NBA. Uh, my guy, I, 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 I really like Barrett. He's overpowering guys. He's huge. Have you seen the guy? He is, dude. But he's a monster. You know who else is huge? Marjon. Robert. The guy that, the 7'6 guy. Donald Turpin. Uh, any, you know, like. <laughs> Bull Bull. Yeah. But, uh, Joel, uh, any of them, like, I don't, I, I don't know. Zion, how much does he weigh? Like, I just feel like he looks very similar to a Julius Randle, except he's, I think he's a better all-around player than than Julius Randle. So I could see him averaging 18 and 11, three or four assists. Like, he's going to be a dynamic player, but I don't see him being as good as, like, the Barrett. I like him better. I don't know. I just think Zion is just a uh, from a physical set of tools. Like, there's no there's nobody to compare him to. Like, I, 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 think, he's, I think the best comparison for him is Barkley in terms yeah. of the way that he could end up playing in the NBA. He's just the guy could just rampage. He handles the ball <laughs> well enough that he can just, you know, yeah. plow through the plow. Do through you think that. he goes gambling? I mean, I, well, maybe, I don't know. That's, but that <laughs> does he golf. Let's hope not. But um, I just think that that his, and again, we, n- nobody knows, but it, to me, his ceiling is he's a, you know, Barkley was six, four, two fifty. Yeah. Zion is six, eight, two eighty. And, you know, he's the key for him is if he's going to reach a level of superstardom, he's going to be able to have to he's going to have to be able to knock down shots. And his shot isn't quite there yet, but I think he's shown a much better floor game than people probably thought he had when he came to Duke. I don't think people thought he could handle the ball and pass as well as he's done this year. And if you look at all his advanced stats and everything, I mean, the season that he's having is like ridiculously off the charts. Like I read one stat where he was his PER, one of those advanced metrics was like over 40 and yeah. super level is like 30. So, I mean, he's just been, he's been unbelievable. And I just think his physical tools yeah. are, are just incredible. And so that's who, that's why I've been stopping. I've been stumping for him all year, Trev. And that's what I, what, that's, that's I've, what I hope I've, I've, I've coined the new term is dying for Zion. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, if you guys are going to draft a guy that shoots 62% from the free throw line and think he's going to be a great shooter one day, God bless. Yeah, no, you're right about that. I mean, I think I think that's always going to be the thing that is going to be, you know, that that's going to be the key to him being able to be a superstar player, especially yeah. in today's game. But I do think that he just, the, the sheer physicality of what he can do, I think overpowers whatever limitations he might have listen, at this point. Listen, we already picked Anthony Bennett number one, so we can't get any yeah. worse. That's you can't, you can't, you can't do worse. You, and, and, you <laughs> yeah, know, so now you, and, and now you have, and now you have Fultz out there that got traded too. So, yeah. um, that part, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 We'll look at there in a second. Uh, 
so then the other trade, the real, the big trade that happened yesterday uh, was the Harrison Barnes, or I guess two days ago now, Harrison Barnes uh, got traded in the middle of a game. What? He was, he was, he was, he was playing and he got traded and he, he had, they told him after the third quarter that he'd been traded, but he, he said that he wanted to stay and support the team for the finish of the game. So he sat on the bench after he'd already been traded. Wow. He got traded to the Kings for Zach Randolph, who hasn't played a single minute all year, and Justin Jackson. I I really like – I mean, I, I think that trade for Sacramento makes a lot of sense. I mean, he makes them better. Sacramento doesn't have their own – you know, they don't have their draft pick this year, so they have no incentive to lose. They're right there on the edge of the playoff picture. I think with Barnes and Fox – and Bagley's been playing a lot better. That's a fun team. It's a fun team to watch, and they got some guys that are entertaining. And I, I think, and Buddy Heald is having a great season. I think that I think Sacramento, with the addition of Harrison Barnes, to me, I think they're a playoff team now, which is scary to say. I don't even know who Justin Jackson is. He was he played at he played at Carolina. He's like a six eight guy. Played on their uh, the team that lost to Villanova. Oh um, yeah, okay, I know who you're talking about. So, so yeah, so he was on that, he was on, he was on Sacramento. So, I mean, they didn't give, you know, they didn't give up much, uh, you know, basically Dallas is getting rid of Barnes's salary so they can figure out what they're going to do with, you know, next to Porzingis and Doncic long-term. Yep. All right. So then the 76ers also got James Ennis for a second round pick from the Rockets. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that does anything for you, but. I figured we've been talking Ennis, a lot about Ennis. Ennis is supposed to be a shooter, correct? Yeah. So that's, but I mean, you know, you figure Houston wants shooters, so if Houston's giving up on him, I can't imagine he moves, yeah. a, moves a needle much for Philly. All right. Um, and then the other big trade that happened uh, before the big big trade was Miritich goes to the Bucks for Jason Smith, Stanley Johnson, who was just traded the day before, and four future second round picks. People love those second round picks, man. Those things are like candy. They just, they just throw That's, those things around like M and M's. Uh, they almost got me in a second round pick if I hadn't bombed the, <laughs> the NBA combine. <laughs> Shit. That's right. They could have thrown, thrown you in there. Come on, man. Um, I'm a steal, I'm like, wait, wait, guys. I am a steal in the second round. I tell you, you what. Are, you, if they have steal. If they would have taken me, I would have blossomed into a poor man's John Stockton. Come on, man. Well, I was going to say, I thought maybe you were going to say, like, you could have been, been, been Mark Price. You know, Mark Price was a second round pick, so it could have been, it could have been you. Um, I, I don't want to, I don't want to gloss over that trade because I really think Miritich helps Milwaukee. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think, I think that, you know, Milwaukee already has the best record in the league. I think they're like 40 and, I think I looked there 40 and 15, maybe 40 yeah, and 13, something like quick. that. And now you add the shooting of Miritich, which is, again, something that, you put Giannis with shooters and you give him space to get to the rim and do the things that he does. Uh, to me, that's a, if Miritich is healthy, I think that's a huge addition that just cements them. I still think if I was, if I was betting on the Eastern conference, I, I, was, I still like Milwaukee to come out of the East of all the teams that are out there. I, I've said, I've said it's better than Jason. But I like Philly and Milwaukee better than I like Boston and Toronto. So I think that's a so, so Milwaukee's 40 and third, they're in first. Toronto's 40 and 16, they're in second. They're a game and a half behind. And somehow Indiana is still in the third spot despite Victor Oladipo. Did you see the other night that Indiana beat the Lakers by 37 yeah, points? That was a crushing. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was a crushing. With LeBron wow. playing, by the way. Uh, I mean, Indiana's tough. They, Darren Carlson. They, they got some scrappy guys. But I mean, they, they, their they best play player, hard. their best players. Right, but they compete. They play hard, and you know, again, I don't think they're going to stay in that third spot. I think they're probably going to end up fifth, if I had to guess. But you know, they're they're solid. I, I still, like I said, I like Milwaukee. I still think the Bucks are the best team in the East when push comes to shove. I think Giannis is the best player in the East, and when you have the best player, I think that gives you a great opportunity to be able to make it through and get to the finals. And Miritich, to me, is that that's a good addition. I mean, I, that that was a very good trade from Milwaukee, okay. in my opinion. All right. So, uh, just because I want to say it again, Stauskas and Wade Baldwin once again got traded. They got traded to Indiana by the Rock from the Rockets, and the Rockets got so, future 
Future considerations. <laughs> what is that? I think that's Trevor Hoffman. That's, uh, <laughs> that's where I come in. <laughs> okay. Um, and then this trade, I only want to say this trade because I didn't even know Avery Bradley was still in the league. Avery Bradley got traded? Avery Bradley got traded. I did, for, I did not hear this trade. I Avery Bradley it. got traded to the Grizzlies for Garrett Temple and Jeremichael Green. And Avery Bradley was apparently on the Clippers. Yeah, so Avery, Avery Bradley. Avery Bradley's having a great year. So let's look. Let's take I don't a look. Think, I don't think he is. I didn't even know he was still playing. No, wait, is he? But he was playing for the Clippers. Is he an expiring contract? He's got to be an expiring contract. Otherwise, I can't imagine why. Have you ever I've seen a seen. team that's eighth, <laughs> that's eighth, that's eighth in the standings punt in the, season, in the middle of a playoff? It's pretty, wild. it's pretty wild that they just. Have you ever seen that, Trevor? Uh, you guys have you seen a team that's eighth plus punt. Uh, you guys are breaking up on me a little bit. I don't know if you guys hear that. Am I breaking up on you? Like the sound? You're okay. Right? You're okay right now. No. Did you um, have you ever have you ever seen a team? Have punt, you ever had a team? I don't know, man. Uh, Av Bradley is that guy. You ever think about trying to bring the ball up against that guy? Whenever I see that guy play defense, I'm like, I don't think I would have got the ball over half court. But I don't know. I don't know what the Clippers Steph- are doing. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, the Clippers again. I think the Clippers are trying to set themselves up for, for free agency. They're they they basically you know just said, we think we can get some guys to come here to LA that don't want to play with the Lakers and don't want to play with LeBron. All right, Coach Jason's struggling to find. Well, Bradley, listen, I was just trying Bradley to. Stats. Okay, so he's averaging eight points a game. He's shooting thirty eight percent from the field, thirty three percent from three point line, and he's averaging two assists per game in thirty minutes. Mm. That doesn't sound like good stats to me. It's not good. Well, maybe you can help. Maybe you can help the Grizzlies win fifth, win fifteen games. Yeah, uh, we'll have to see. All right. So then the the big trade of the day. The big the big trade of the day was Mark Gasol for Jonas C.J. Miles in a twenty twenty four second round. I'm not sure how to feel about this one, to be honest with you. Like, I, I feel like Gasol is definitely an upgrade over Valanchunas, but I, I just don't. If you look at where the league is headed and who Gasol is going to have to guard on the perimeter, to me, uh, trading for a center as a piece that you think is going to put you over the top, I'm just not convinced that Gasol makes a significant difference in what. In what they're seeing, what Toronto's ceiling is, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's that's the way that's the way I look at that trade. I, I don't see it. I don't see it pushing them past any of those other teams at the top of the East. I don't know. Interesting. I I, I like the trade. I think he kind of knows he's on his, you know, the, he's twilight of his career. He wants to he wants to get to the finals. He wants to have a shot at winning. Um, I I I have Toronto coming out of the East. Really? Uh huh. Why is that? What do you like? I just I do just you believe love. In Kawhi? I believe in Kawhi. I just think they can hit. I think they can just knock down more shots. I don't. Giannis has never really been on a big stage yet. Um, I think he's Kyle Lowry has. Kyle Lowry is terrible in the playoffs. But Kyle Lowry stinks in the playoffs. That's yeah. why. That's why I don't like Toronto. That's you know my, how that's my you know how, you know when we called it LeBronto. Okay, the last four years. I mean, I'd, it's going to be. I would honest, shit the bed too. Uh, I, just, I would shit the bed if LeBron was gar- anywhere near me. I would be yeah, missing look, a lot of I, shots. I agree. I just think that you know if well now maybe you can make an argument that LeBron's not your or that uh, Lowry's not your second best player, but if Lowry's your second best player, I just man I don't I don't feel I don't feel too good about that if I'm Toronto because he hasn't come through he hasn't come up big in the playoffs in the past and so that's why. As much as I like Kawhi, that's why I still think the Bucks. Uh, I still think the Bucks are the team to beat. All right, and the last the last trade of the day happened literally five minutes before the trade deadline. I'm pretty sure. Markel Fultz traded to the Magic for Jonathan Simmons, a 2020 first round pick via the Thunder, and a future second round pick. And my first reaction was. That's a lot for Markel Fultz. I agree, 
And yet at the same time, I'm I'm disappointed. I, I would if I was the Cavs, I would have tried to get in. I would have tried to get in the Markel Fultz. You would have traded. I mean, you would have traded a first round and a second round pick. Yes. I don't know about that. I, mean, I, I would have traded a person for, for – and maybe one of those picks. I don't think I would have traded both a first and a second. Okay, first of all, a second-round pick, what's the odds that that guy – You just said one, Mark Price and Trevor Huffman. Look, That's I know, but I'm just saying, if you look at the Thanks odds – Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> ruin my dream. If, you, <laughs> if you look at the odds of a second-round pick becoming a productive player, the odds of that are pretty low. And I just think if you're – you know, I've said it before on the show – Fultz could end up being done. He might never, ever, ever be a productive player based on whatever is going on in his brain or with his shoulder. Who knows? Based on the yips. He's got the yips. I mean, he definitely has the yips. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt. That's one of the things we talked about a couple times that, you know, to me, I I think what happened, and I've shared this before, I think what happened, Trevor, is that he hurt his shoulder. And in the course of hurting his shoulder, he tried to make some adjustment to his shot to compensate for – the pain in his shoulder. Yeah. And then as a result of that, he just psyched himself out, messed up his form, and then just lost it. I mean, he just lost his ability to to shoot the ball. Yeah. And he got one of the kind of like, you know, the old baseball guys who couldn't throw the ball the first play, base or couldn't mm-hmm. throw it home. And right. now that's going to be really difficult to overcome. And yet at the same time, I think that there's a reason why he was the number one overall draft pick. And if you can get yourself back, even if let's say he gets back to 90%, maybe he's never the same confident 100% guy that he was before. If you take 90% of the presumptive number one draft choice in the NBA, you still have yourself a pretty good player. And so I would just, and he's only 19 or 20 years old. He's got, even if he, even if it takes him five years to figure it out, at some point, if he figures it out, to me, the upside is worth taking a chance on. And mm-hmm. yet, at the same time, I'd be, I'd be, will, I'd be very willing to say that he may never, he may never play again. He may never get over it. But I think it's worth the risk. Uh, he could just become a Rajon Rondo to me. Like if if he can't shoot, he's really athletic. You know, he, he yeah. overall, I mean, he's the youngest player to ever have a triple double. Right. But, you know, I would take a risk on his athleticism, and and you hope that. Okay, yeah, he might not. He, he's probably not a great shooter. At, at, more so, like, I tried to change my shot sometimes, like, because I'm old and I'm like, you know what? I figure I, I got to shoot like Steph Curry now, just like <laughs> jump one inch off the ground, slide a, a small, uh, small paper underneath it, and hopefully, you know, I have no elevation. But I, I try to change my shot, and like, it, it's impossible for me. I can't imagine a guy living, you know, 20 years playing for. 10 years and then be like, Oh, I'm going to change my shot in a year. It's going to be efficient. There's no way. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I, I don't think, I don't think you can go and totally remake. I mean, you might be able to tweak something, Yeah. but to totally remake it. And I, and again, I, I think it started, I think it started with an injury. And yeah, then right. as a result of that injury, he tried to do something mechanically right. to allow himself to continue to play. And then that just totally screwed with his mind. 100%. And, and now he can't, you know, he just can't get out of his own way. So it'll be interesting when he does finally come back. Obviously, I think he needed to get out of Philly. And so yeah. now in Orlando, you got a fresh start. You get a new set of coaches, a new set of doctors. You get a new set of therapists mm-hmm. that get a hold of him. And There's no pressure maybe, on him either. Yeah. I mean, maybe he figures it out. You know, he's no longer the number one draft choice to the Sixers. Now he's a guy who Orlando traded you know, a couple of nobody players. Do you think players. they could take him to Disney and maybe that'll, like, put a little magic in him and it'll hey, be maybe, fine? Who knows? Who knows? Tinkerbell can sprinkle her pixie he, dust on him. You know what's funny is he shoots the same free throw percentage as uh, Zion. There you high, go. College. A little fun That's fact it. for you. Yeah, because Fultz was not a great foul shooter in in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in college. So, so I, I don't know. I, I like, I, again, I like to trade for Orlando. I, I don't. I think there's... Yeah, you gave away a couple picks, but to me, the upside is is way worth taking a chance on them and taking a flyer. So, of the, I mean, we we didn't talk about every trade, but I kind of picked all the important, what I deemed were important slash interesting ones. What teams do you think won the trading deadline? Based on what question. we talked about, um, I, I'm going to say Philly. I think Philly did the. 
Phil. Yeah, I mean, I Philly. think getting I think getting Tobias Harris is is I like of all the teams I like the best. I, I, I would pick three. I would say the Tobias Harris trade for Philly is a good one. I really like Miritich for the Bucks. I think that's more of a minor move, but I think it I think it could have a big impact. And then I like Harrison Barnes going to Sacramento. I think I think Sacramento needed to do something. Again, they are completely incentivized to keep winning. And you add Barnes to the Fox, Bagley, Willie Cauley Stein, Buddy Heald group. And I yeah. think I mean I, I like that I like that lineup. It's a fun team. So to me, those are the three teams that, that stand out for me. And the the, the other one I guess would be Gasol to Toronto, but I'm not as sold that that makes as big of a difference as those first three. That's, I'll tell you mine, and most of the time my predictions are correct, unlike Jason. <laughs> uh, um, Memphis, the Mem- or, uh, Toronto trade, Gasol going to Toronto, I think is going to put them over the top for me. I don't see anybody on Milwaukee's roster matching up with Mark really well. They also have Serge Ibaka, who spaces the floor well, Danny Green. So they have they, they're, I just think overall they're a, a better shooting team. Meritich does help them kind of space the floor a little bit, but you know they have Pascal, that guy that came out of nowhere. I mean, if you look at their roster, they have Kawhi getting paid twenty three million, Kyle getting paid thirty one million, Serge Ibaka getting paid twenty one million, and Marcus Saul getting twenty four million. I mean, that's a hundred. That's a hundred. That's I'm not good at math. You guys tell me. That's a lot of freaking money. That's a lot of money. On the court, all at once. So that's the amount of money that you were giving in your wallet when you were playing down in uh art in that envelope, right? Oh my gosh! Yeah, actually, <laughs> I, I I just uh I, I just wrote an article about that about how how it is getting paid, you know what the differences are. Like a lot of people have asked me, like, what do you how is how do you get paid in you know in the NBA versus you know in Europe or Venezuela? And I was like, man, it's different every single time. So I got I got a good I got a good article coming out I'll share with you guys about that. Yeah, cool, uh, cool. And then cool. I I think Dallas is number two. I think Porzingis and Donacic, uh, that's just going to be super fun to watch. And I I can see where they're I think they're moving in a really good direction with those two. Um, Donacic has surprised everybody, so I I got to I got to get on that bandwagon. I was really hoping Gasol was going to go there, man. Get all the get all the Euro, get all the euros together. The euros. No, Chris, all, Chris, all the white Chris guys. and Luca is going to be a lot of fun. That that if if Porzingis can come back healthy from that knee injury, and you know the two of them end up spending the next five ten years together, and they can bring somebody else in. Dallas is going to be a lot of fun without a doubt. All right, let's. Uh, I know I said last time, Jason, when we were when we were talking that I thought Anthony Davis would end up in L.A. prior to the trading deadline so that prediction obviously was wrong wow. uh, i still i don't know I, I still i still think he's gonna end up in la at some point yeah. I, I don't you know yeah, i don't know I, well i don't know Trevor, i don't know we were talking a little bit ago but they were the orleans was trying to shut him down for the season and basically the league said you can't do that um uh at least according to Woj, Woj said there was a growing sentiment that they were thinking about shutting him down for the season but "Quote unquote," decided not to do that, and then his follow-up tweet was, "The league, uh, the league was concerned about him being shut down as well as the players' association." Blah 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 blah. So essentially, I think what happened was, the Pelicans floated the idea, and then the league office pretty soon after said, "You can't do that." Uh, so uh, I, I think I think I think he's definitely not going to be on New Orleans after the season, but I don't know where he's going to end up. And I don't know. I, I don't really buy into the Boston getting into the market because he says he doesn't want to play for Boston. His dad doesn't want. His to dad doesn't want to play for Boston, but I heard that he didn't want to play for Boston either. So well, and then That's and that. still, the Kyrie's the the Kyrie uncertainty is going to hang over that deal. Where if you're Anthony Davis and Kyrie is kind of waffling back and forth, and you have to wait to see if Kyrie's going to resign. See, see, here's the here's think about the perfect symmetry here. It's like LeBron came to Cleveland and then Love got traded with a one-year contract and then he did a little handshake deal and Love signed an extension. Okay, I, I maybe that's gonna happen. Kyrie's gonna go to Le- LeBron this time, and then Anthony Davis is gonna get traded for. I, I think that's totally reasonable. I could totally see Kyrie, LeBron, and Anthony Davis in Laker uniforms next year. Hmm. That would be wild. Wouldn't it though? It really would. Gosh, I hate, I just, 
hate the superpowers all joining together. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I would. I, it would be. It's, it's much more exciting to see an organically homegrown team well, kind of work together. Well, Maybe have one. You know, you yeah. add one guy rather than. Don't, don't worry. At first take this morning, Levar Ball was on. Did you see this? Oh yeah, he said it. He said he said he he said that Lonzo was better than LeBron. Oh, I didn't God. hear him say that. I just heard him say that LeBron will never win a title in L.A. without Lonzo. That was the quote that no, I he saw. Said, he said he said LeBron, Le, Lonzo was better than LeBron. And then he said that Shannon Sharp looked at him and said, did you just say what I think you did? And he said, hell yeah, I did. Oh, my God. I can't. The, the, Lake, the Lakers have done a great job of silencing LeVar up until this point. So, I don't know. It might be time to rein him in again because that guy, he's nuts. He's, he is absolutely crazy. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, uh, that... man. I don't, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do with LeVar. You guys, find, you guys find it weird watching LeBron, you know, being big Cleveland fans. I know all my, all my uh, friends at Kent State and, and Ohio, man. Is it hard to watch him kind of transition away? And being it was harder. On goal. It was harder the first time. It was harder the first time. This time, I will say that it doesn't. It hasn't. It hasn't been as difficult this time. And part of it is this time he's like the way that his team is constructed now. There's no chance that he's going to win. So it's not like he left Cleveland to go to a super team like and, he did last and, and last I, time. So uh-huh. it doesn't. It didn't hurt nearly as bad. I don't find it. I, Really is strange. And I think the thing is, I think the thing is too, like when we talked about what we thought he was going to do, I kind of had already made peace that I felt like he was leaving. And I feel like that made it easier. Whereas last time, I mean, I still remember where I was when they had that stupid decision. I remember where I was standing. I was working at Arby's, listening to the damn thing on the radio. And I hear, I'll take my towns to South Beach. And I just remember (laughs) the rest of the night walking around. Arby's, like in a in a, like a zombie state, like yeah, that upset. Was not, that was not a good night if you're a Cleveland basketball So I think I think it was just I think a it was handled differently, but b I think I kind of was way more at peace with it. And he won a championship. He did what he wanted to do. He he brought us the championship, and it was over. Whereas we kind of kind of felt like the first time he kind of abandoned us. Yeah, I agree. I, I never I never thought in my lifetime I was going to see one. So the fact that I got to see one. Uh, kind of, you know, just made me okay with him with him going. We're gonna get two no now because we got Baker. Yeah, we so, got, man, we got we'll, Baker. We'll see. We'll see. Browns, <laughs> Browns, and tw- Browns in 2020, Trevor. Browns. In hey, 2020. man, go Browns, <laughs> go Browns. I'm a big fan of the Browns, man. The worst, uh, just, what worst franchise ever. Well, see, I tell people all the time. Here's here's the funny story. So, my team when I was a kid was your Detroit Lions. So oh. I work, I root for the two worst franchises in the history of the NFL. So no one could ever accuse me of being a front runner. There are two of the only four. I think there's still four teams that haven't made the Super Bowl, and yeah, my listen, two of them are listen. Mine. But they have arguably have the two greatest running backs of all they time. They do. I agree, no doubt. Jim Brown and Barry Sanders. Yep, absolutely. That's true. Barry Sanders is he's a legend. Barry Sanders. That guy was that guy was phenomenal. It, that was the best and that was the best commercial on the whole Super Bowl, by the way. The NFL. Yeah, time. wasn't yeah, it yeah. though? It was great. Trying to identify those guys was that was a blast as each oh, guy man. flashed up on the screen. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> loved, I loved when Brady just took his rings off. That was fantastic. Did you hold these for me? Yeah. Oh. And then and then the Franco Harris catch was the best too. That was that was awesome. The immaculate reception when he came running in. When and probably I want to note like seventy five percent of the people watching the Super Bowl probably had no idea who that was. No, I'm sure they did. But, uh, I, 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 I appreciated that. <laughs> All right, guys, do we have anything else to touch on? No. All right, I think that's it. So to everyone out there, thanks for listening to this special trade deadline all-star draft edition of the Hoop Heads podcast, and we will catch you on our next episode. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Hoop Heads podcast brought to you by Head Start Basketball. 